I don't know how to describe it, but the isolation that comes with living out here, like I create nonstop. I wake up in the morning, I go to the barn, collect eggs from the chicken coop, feed the donkeys, muck out the barn, clean up donkey shit. <laughs> and then I'll just start working and, you know, I'll lose track of time. It'll be all of a sudden like eight o'clock at night and I haven't even eaten because I'm just in the middle of 10 projects at once. I'll be painting while I'm working on a leather bag, making jewelry on the porch. I grew up in Western Maryland and West Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains. Grew up with a lot of bikers and hippies and just, you know, people that lived off the beaten path. And my mom was an artist and my dad was a photographer. There was no sheep mentality. I come from a long line of really strong, independent people who do whatever the fuck they want. I used to have this thing when I was growing up, I would Everybody would copy whatever I did, so like, if I got another hole in my ear, then all my friends would get another one, so I ended up with 12. Grew up poor, and I would shop at thrift stores, and I never had the option to buy what everybody else wore anyways, so I think it was my form of expression, rebelling against that. The biggest thing I learned from my parents was to broaden my horizons and never believe that that was gonna hold me down, that just because you didn't have money meant that you couldn't do things you wanted to do, because there's always a way. As soon as I turned 18, I moved to LA and drove cross country. I wanted to go to art school originally and I couldn't afford it, so I decided I was just gonna study with the best people that I could find, which ended up being you know, fit modeling and listening to the most amazing designers while they were trying things on me. I started modeling right away and I supported myself for 10 years doing that. I would model for their painting classes and listen to the teachers and get paid $15 an hour for the education that I couldn't have afforded. And Around that time I met Henry Duarte. I was working for a fine artist and I was sewing beads onto canvas for him and doing these huge portraits of Liberace. He took me out to dinner, some kind of, you know, twist of fate, I guess, with Henry. And I said, oh, I know your designs, I love your work, I want to show you, I have all these ideas in my head for bags, I really want to learn how to make. And I didn't have any paper, so I remember I grabbed a phone book from the restaurant and I just started sketching on it. And he said, okay, you know, I, I would really like to work with you. If you knew his work, it, it spoke for itself and that was the kind of designer that I wanted to be. I wanted to make things that were recognizable. And I was living with my best friend Rachel at the time and her cousin Angie. She started coming and getting together with Henry and I and we were working together. And then he would leave and we would just, you know, stay up all night and make bags and then we'd start wearing them around LA. And it was like as soon as we walked out the door of our apartment, we would get stopped. Even though we didn't have any business experience that we would be able to start a company if we worked together because we could help each other and it's been about seven years. I literally, like, I'm still wearing the same clothes I've had since I was 16. Like I just, I'll like something and I'll hold on to it forever. There's no trends. This pair Henry gave to me when I was learning leather work from him. I think they were his wives and they're sort of falling apart now, but the more holes they get, the better. So I like things that have a story, you know, it's something you can remember a person by or an experience. I think that's why I hold on to clothes for so long, because it's like a memory. These are my oldest, favorite pair of Levi's. Got some motorcycle grease on them, but I've had these since I was like 18. These boots I got at a yard sale in LA for $5. They're a couple sizes too big, but I love them. This jacket I just got, recently here in Austin. It's from the 1940s. It's pony hair. I got it for $65 because it smelled kind of funny, but I think it's wearing off now. My dad actually got this for my mom. It's my favorite piece ever. Hopi bear claw. It's a symbol of strength. My mom gave that to me when I was leaving home to move to California, and I've worn it every day ever since. And this one my great uncle made in South Dakota in the 70s. This one I got on eBay for like $60, probably 10 years ago before they were so trendy. And the shirt was my business partner Angie's, I think originally it was a dress and it ripped in half and it was then like a skirt and a top, so I just turned it into a shirt. And when I go to LA, everyone always says, hey, you're safe now, you can take your knife off, but I live on a ranch, you know, you use it every day to cut hay bales open. You know, I carry it as a tool, but also for self-defense because you know, maybe I'll walk up the street to the gas station and some guy tries to pull over and throw me in the car. I'm like, it's good to have. In this dress, I probably got it at a thrift store. <laughs> but I love the colors. Brown's my favorite color. And these boots I got in Tucson, gone for $10. Wore them to go see Willie Nelson a couple months ago and it was pouring rain. We got stuck in the middle of this torrential downpour and I was almost in tears. I thought for sure I'd ruined them, but Apparently they're tougher than yeah, I realized. Yeah. We have a very carefully selected source of all wild deer and elk hides for our bags. Everything is made from deer and elk. Yeah. An individual goes and hunts that animal for their family and instead of just leaving the hide to deteriorate in the field, 
they bring it to the tannery and we get the finished product to turn into our bags. It's always been that way and it's something that, you know, there's no compromise. Like if we don't have enough materials to make the order because it's not hunting season, then we'll put people on a waiting list. And most people that make leather bags, they'll use deer tan cowhide to get the effect of deer skin. But my problem with that is that you're supporting the factory farm industry, you're supporting the giant corporate food companies where this is a byproduct that they can make a little extra money off selling the hides and I don't want anything to do with that. I won't eat at McDonald's so I'm not going to use the cow hide that come from that slaughterhouse. It was a really hard decision to make to leave LA because all my friends are there and my two best friends and I have our business together which is based out of there but I realized that LA just wasn't inspiring me anymore. Creating art, being as productive as I thought I could be, I've learned so much about growing my own food and living off the land, how to be sustainable. That's something that's really important to me is eating wild meat and also fresh vegetables. We grow all of our own vegetables, everything's organic. I didn't grow up doing those things. It's something that my grandmother did and left and moved away from. I had to learn how to cook. I didn't know how to cook that kind of food. I grew up macaroni and cheese in a box. The factory farming and the mass production of food, that's not the relationship we're intended to have with our animal brothers. I remember the first time I got on a horse, I just fell in love with it. There was something really empowering and magical about, about communicating with them psychically and them, you know, being willing to let me get on their back. Like They're prey animals and we're predators, so they look at us and they should be afraid but you can, you can talk to them without speaking and you can make them feel comfortable. And when you get that, that perfect balance with a horse, it's the most incredible feeling. Eventually I'd like to have at least like a dozen of my own Mustangs running around out here. <laughs> I've never seen Sex and the City or heard about the TV show Girls. Even when I worked in LA, I was doing commercials and I didn't watch them because I didn't watch TV, it was just a job. I would fight against it in LA. You feel like you have to compete with that to an extent, but every time it would start to bother me or weigh on my heart, I would just leave and I would go to a horse ranch or I went to Canada and I spent some time on the res and I would go to ceremony. Nothing cures all the bullshit like sitting on a mountain for four days and just being there and praying and finding your inner strength. I feel like having the average human stuff quiet down really allows all of the beautiful ideas that are lurking underneath the surface to come out. I try to empower people through my art, capture different type of beauty. I got really obsessed with the neon colors and just the energy that surrounds everybody. I felt like I could see it. I love to be out here, but I also think it's important to share what we're doing with the world and to inspire people. You can't just drop out and expect that to do anything great for the world, so there's got to be a balance. I think our generation really has an opportunity to, to go back to a more natural way of life, and that's something that I'm really passionate about. When I see an older person smiling and the wrinkles and the lines around their eyes, I think that's one of the most beautiful things in life. It's definitely something I aspire to. I'd like to be a, an old lady telling people all the stories of life one day. There's so much freedom in being alone, and I think a lot of people, especially nowadays, they're so continually distracted by their phone, by the TV, by, you know, their friends or whatever it is that, you know, they surround themselves with. I think a lot of people are scared to be alone. They're scared to look inside their soul. They're scared to, you know, really get to know themselves. I think being fearless is probably the best thing that you can strive for in life. And if I feel like I'm afraid of something, I'll confront it and I'll challenge it and I'll face it head on because I don't want to be a fearful person.